Uh, good, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, participating in uh, this session. Uh, this, is, this session is uh, bird phase of feather of the uh, Zephyr Altos. Uh, we want to you. We want you to participate in this session. Uh, make some noise, uh, please relax. Self, I am uh, Hiroshi Tokita. Uh, I am uh, working at Fujitsu uh, for uh, embedded uh, Linux programmer or, or uh, supporting staff. Uh, uh, all, all thing is uh, as described. Uh, this photo is uh, taken by uh, Yamagishi-san, uh, AJ member. Uh, not uh, not uh, uh, photo is uh, my uh, smart for me. <laughs> uh, please, uh, uh, I want to uh, more, more smart. <laughs> uh, please. Yes. <laughs> Is this working? Uh, uh, I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Yashi. Uh, I'm a CEO of CP, uh, Space Gives. That's a company uh, creating a uh, spacecraft using Zephyr. <laughs> and I'm a uh, embed Linux uh, developers and open source programmers and an Emacs user. Any Emacs users here? <laughs> All right. And I'm a train runner. OK. Let's go next. Uh, this session topics. Um, first, uh, I will speak about uh, new, uh, news about the, uh, Zephyr, uh, about for uh, entry or hobby users. Uh, my easy to use using uh, Zephyr. And the second, uh, uh, Yashi uh, speak uh, the, his. The development, uh, spacecraft, uh, and uh, uh, satellite, and uh, robots. Uh, uh, start, uh, we will start discussion. Uh, uh, as, uh, as described. <laughs> Uh, and uh, fourth, uh, we'll, uh, I will uh, ask for uh, some person to uh, uh, this topic, uh, the first future and pro uh, prospect uh, and challenges. Uh, so start the sessions. First, uh, uh, recently, uh, uh, I now uh, reviewing uh, Pico's support for uh, pull request. Uh, this review a bit uh, framed. <laughs> Uh, but we now discuss the final topics for to approve. It may uh, be able to put into the 400 uh, uh, release candidate too. Uh, this is also uh, cheap as uh, Pico 1. It will be a good start point to Zephyr. Andrew Featherstone, the author of this PR. Uh, his great uh, effort, uh, th thank you. And, uh, more, uh, and one more, uh, M5 stack is uh, uh, very popular in Japanese uh, hobby electronics communities. Uh, now uh, we are starting support to this uh, device. Uh, but this uh, device is a bit complex. Uh, uh, we are going to create some de driver with dependencies. It's going to take a while. Uh, it, uh, it is just my work. Uh, the new uh, West SDK command make going, getting started guide get is shorter. We can run Blinky on, only with uh, copy and paste. Uh, great. Ah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Uh, this, is, this is M5 stack. Uh, it is very popular in Japanese uh, uh, hobby electronics communities. Also, uh, uh, China and, uh, and Taiwan, uh, uh, East, uh, East Asia regions. And uh, the far, uh, our, our release candidate one is uh, now tagged uh, uh, a few hours ago. It, uh, Pico 2 is dropped from this. <laughs> Uh, and uh, the far, uh, uh, West SDK command uh, uh, happened to uh, recent uh, uh, for, for the uh, version four. Uh, it it make uh, simple uh, simple uh, getting started right. Be, very uh, uh, everyone uh, not uh, over to to uh, running the, the Brinky. 
And uh, one more, uh, early in core for Zephyr, uh, this project is uh, start, uh, start as a uh, ZSOC 2022 uh, project. Last year, uh, the goal and I created fundamental implementations. Uh, this year, uh, I'll uh, edit lacking APIs such as uh, SPI and, and more. Uh, so, uh, finish the the uh, Arduino API uh, implementations. Uh, and uh, I'll show uh, uh, using the module to uh, putting microblocks as uh, a visual language uh, uh, for big robot. Uh, uh, it is already used in actual project. Now, uh, Luca Brady, uh, the developer of LLXT, uh, and also Arduino project member, is trying to solve the license incompatible issue with splitting a loadable module by LLXT, uh, excluding uh, GPL V2 module, uh, code uh, into the uh, loadable modules. Arduino project publishes the article, the end of embed marks a new, new beginning of Arduino and uh, transition to Zephyr. I, have, I, I have, haven't heard about this detail of the plan, uh, but I would be happy if our activities so far have uh, been used. Okay, I mean, this is a BOF, so you can just talk, all right? All right, um, I'm just giving you um, the, what, what I'm doing. And we, the space gives us established like uh, 2018. And then we work on, uh, oops, I didn't change the Japanese, sorry. Uh, that's uh, Moonlander. And we worked on some uh, IMU sensors for uh, some spacecraft. Uh, Gitai is a, a space company who's creating uh, robot arms on ISS, uh, International Space Station. And also the Elevation Space, that's other company, and doing some um, uh, spec creating spacecraft, and we work on the computers. Oh, by the way, we are not the spacecraft company. We are computer companies. And we create a board and integrate the Zephyr onto it, and then sell to our customers, like uh, new space companies. Right, so that's what we do. And now we are working on uh, uh, the moon rover and also the second uh, moon landers. And by the way, uh, we are also creating a, a CubeSat. That's tiny, tiny uh, spacecraft. And because we haven't done it by ourselves yet, so we're going to just test our board and the Zephyr again on the space, how the Zephyr works on the space. All right, let's go next. And we are also working on. Um, uh, that's a robot uh, for Fukushima. You know that the Japan had a catastrophic uh, event in the Fukushima, and it's huge uh, radiations in uh, around that uh, place. So we're <coughs> partnering with a space robot. It's called a space robotics, and they are <coughs> creating a robot, and we are doing all the uh, electrical, the so uh, software kind of things. And the robot itself is also run by Zephyr. And all the uh, uh, human interface is also running Zephyr. All right, thanks. And this one is some other things. We also uh, work on um, <coughs> quantum computing. Usually that you see, you know, you see the quantum news, uh, computer news. You see those um, uh, golden chandelier things, right? That's just a refrigerator. And <laughs> yeah, it's a huge, huge rift, really. And it goes like uh, very close to absolute zero. But that one, we haven't, I mean, running that Zephyr on that thing yet. But uh, all the data, what qubit, has to be read from that refrigerator into the, our uh, ordinary temperature uh, room. So what we do is put the huge FPG on it and put the uh, high um, precision DAC, uh, that's digital A analog converter, and also the analog digital convert converters, and run the Zephyr on the FPGA. Uh, no, run the FPGA. No, 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 wait, 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 wait a minute. Uh, we put the FPGA and put the uh, soft core CPU on the FPGA, and then put the Zephyr run on that soft core CPU. And you control all the DSC and the uh, ADC in uh, real time. 
and retrieve all the data from the qubit and just send it out uh, using the Ethernet and uh, what was the name of the protocol? Oh, damn it, I wrote it. Something, something, not, not the QMTT or whatever. Uh, yeah, something like that. Okay, next. All right, that, that was Start was discussion. Uh, we inter introduced that we, we can use Zephyr for various projects such as from hobby electronics to space explorations. What is the, uh, would you try to create using Zephyr? Uh, is there any problems it could, could, could solve? Please let us uh, know your thought. Also, if, if there are anything else you'd like to talk about related to Zephyr that not on topics, uh, please raise your hand. <laughs> and, and more. Uh, this is uh, how this is. Uh, so I will throw a snack uh, brought yesterday with a uh, Zephyr sticker. <laughs> uh, trick or treat? Uh, no, trick or contribution. <laughs> so if you, if you want the Zephyr stickers, <laughs> just you know, raise your hand or whatever. He's going to just throw it throw at you. All right, let's start. Oh, also, we have uh, the kites. Oh, you, you, which way you want? The snack? Oh, no. I have a suggestion slash question. Sure. I want a kite. <laughs> okay, so um, there's some, I'm just wondering if something like this exists. Are there any books for kids that relate to how to get started with Zephyr? Because um, there's a, the, out of the CNCF, um, they did this really nice children's book. Uh, it talks about Kimani the giraffe. And um, it's, it's really great for helping kids understand AI. They do a little bit of scratch programming. They learn about a bunch of uh, CNCF projects like Kubernetes and other things like that. And is there something like that that's meant for like a non-technical parent who has an eight to 12 year old? Not that I know of. Kate, do you know? No, I don't know anything directly from like, like the giraffe, et cetera, but uh, their microblocks project is designed for starting to uh, work with computing. And it's now ported and using Zephyr on the microblocks. Kathy Giori has been pretty good about taking and adopting that. So I'd say that's a starting point. But we certainly don't have the um, approachability that CNCF has spent some time pulling together. OK, because I, I can try to help to either make connections nice. or try to help to kind of contribute. But I'm fairly new to Zephyr, and so I'd need someone who really understands like what's doable and reasonable and stuff like that. But um, I, I also need to see who I can pull in from the CNCF or that sort of educational side. Because I think it could be super fun to do. OK, great. We got the um, one. Uh, okay. Intern this uh, autumn, and she has been working on some project in the NASA and I'll stuff see. like that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, she <laughs> she was introduced to Zephyr, <laughs> awesome. and uh, the hardest point she had was uh, kconfig and uh, device model in the Zephyr. So it's gonna be uh, quite. I don't want to say any negative things, but uh, I'd like to see those uh, kids' books. Okay, coming in kids' books. Hey, um, more, more question. Uh, anyone else here? Anyone? 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 Oh, right. How many of you using the fur right now? No. Oh, yeah. there you go. Two. All right, three? Three. Nice. Thanks. How many of you are uh, contributors of Zephyr? No? OK. 
<laughs> uh, Zephyr is, uh, uh, I think, uh, Zephyr is easy to control with beautiful project. Uh, because uh, small patch is okay, and uh, small device uh, such as uh, like uh, sensor and uh, more uh, simple device can uh, be uh, uh, commit and be, uh, making a progress. It, it is uh, good for uh, uh, new uh, newbie engineer pro uh, education programs, I think. <laughs> Answer. So I came here really not knowing like, uh, I have two questions mainly. Why is Zephyr different from other microkernels? I believe it had to do with like some level of compatibility with Linux. And why is, uh, I mean, where does Zephyr uh, fall short of Linux currently? in use cases? Um, Zephyr is not compatible with Linux at all. Okay. It's totally different system. Um, but we have implemented uh, many good things uh, in the Linux kernel to the Zephyr. Uh, I mean, the simple one is like uh, coding rules. And so if you, were, uh, you get used to Linux kernel, it's so easy to read the Zephyr, Zephyr code. It's very similar. And we also implement, uh, imported the kconfigs, and we also using uh, device tree. What else? Uh, we learned a lot. We learned a lot of things from Linux kernel. So if you are Linux kernel uh, programmers, then it's so easy. Maybe that's one 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 part. Um, I don't know. What about the architecture? Zephyr uh, is a, a study from Linux, but not not equal to a Linux. No, not at all. No. But not any it. anything like uh, any future like maybe compared to the free autos or I don't know. Thread X. Zephyr feature is uh, uh, yeah. Of course, uh, diversity. Uh, diversity is uh, uh, can sub, uh, it make make uh, able to support uh, various devices. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, kind of architecture uh, and uh, schedule is more. Uh, I think it, it is uh, not not special. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it is very uh, flat, flat uh, binary implementations. In the real time OS world, um, it's so fragmented. I mean, everybody is doing their own thing. <laughs> And I think that, I mean, when the Linux Foundation uh, introduced Zephyr, they, I mean, people were like reacting, why? I mean, there's a bunch of real time OS in the, in, the, in the net, then why do you have to use another one, right? Mm -hmm. But because it was so fragmented, like, you have to choose something, mm -hmm. and the resource is so uh, distributed. So I think that um, in the IoT world right now, uh, we need some default standard uh, real-time OS, and that's why I think the foundation decided to, you know, uh, work on uh, one real-time OS. I think is that right, Kate? The other side was um, back when we started Zephyr. It was really, really fragmented, okay? And there was a joke going on about the S in IoT, where S stood for security, and there wasn't any. <laughs> and so we started Zephyr with the view that we needed to get security, because you need to have some, you know, secure communications, but also you need to know that you're actually following best practices. And so that was part of the motivation for Zephyr, was to have a place where we could actually collaborate on security and collaborate on safety and build things up from there. And that's, it's a journey, as I was talking about earlier, but um, that was part of the motivation. And um, it was, I think, about 2018, 2019, we really started to see people actually get behind the vision. And I think that it was a uh, tough road to come by. I mean, yeah. the, the all the things take time. Yeah, and the kernel people, or the, all the programmers doesn't like oh, those, uh, <laughs> what, the misla or whatever. but. Um, we all know that uh, functional safety and uh, security is so important, but somehow we don't do that. And I think that the uh, foundation is really 
um, doing the right direction, doing the hard work, doing the securities implemented in Zephyr. So that's a big future in Zephyr, I think. Hi, this is Benjamin from Siemens Mobility speaking. Um, I have the question going into the, into the direction of um, ThreadX because I just mentioned it. Um, since they're also looking at safety and so on, um, how do they compare to what Zephyr is doing right now? Do you know about this? <laughs> sure. <laughs> They've got a kernel out there that has been safety certified. However, they've not been accepting any contributions into the repo for the last year. So it's not evolving. And um, the Eclipse Foundation is busy, just formed a ThreadX Alliance to try to see if we can get a funding pool to take the certifications. Zephyr is trying to do this stuff out in the open right now. Um, and we're trying to do a, uh, we're, trying, we're trying an experiment so that we can do the traceability out in the open so that if you don't have the pieces that you need out of what we certify, you can see the pattern and you can build on what we've done. So this is where we're sort of heading with Zephyr. And right now, the ThreadX one is, like say, if you can use the kernel as it is, or some of the components as it is, that's fine. Um, they've got some interesting components that we might try to collaborate with them on. We, you know, I've been in discussions with Frederick and things like that. So it's... You know, these are things that are evolving, and we're all trying to figure our way through this. How do you deal with safety at its lowest level? Thank you. Yeah, I think the, con the doing the security and uh, safety in a continuous manner is so difficult, I think. Um, we have a, um, a space agency in Japan, it's called JAXA, and they were uh, flying the rockets and uh, satellites a lot, right? And I don't know about the SPED, uh, SPEDX, but they're using a, a real-time OS called uh, Topars. That's um, just flavor of a real-time OS. They once get the certificated and all the stuff, and you know, spend lots of money doing that. But once it's done, it's just done. It's just frozen right there, and just keep flying the rockets with the exactly the same hardware and exactly the same software, and. We don't want to do that in the Zephyr. We want to evolve, um, what, uh, keep developing it and keep uh, evolving it. So I think it's tough to, you know, still doing the safety and in the right direction. Okay. Well, I think uh, safety is uh, sometimes the uh, easy to develop it or uh, anything I benefit. Uh, it is a very difficult uh, choice. Uh, uh, now, uh, Zephyr is uh, very fast and uh, quickly and uh, uh, gross. Uh, it is uh, uh, sometimes really uh, 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 cause uh, trade off, uh, I think. Oh, uh, I like Zephyr so much. I know. <laughs> nice. From uh, last year's Tokita Sound session. Uh, and so I like to use uh, it an uh, alternative to Android, uh, but uh, there, there are any benefits to it other than being lightweight. Uh, so Android's uh, reference board is so expensive. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, mm, and so, <laughs> this guy. What was the question? Uh, uh, Android board? I I would like to use Zephyr uh, as uh, an alternative to Android. Uh, Zephyr is uh, too lightweight uh, and to use uh, easy uh, for me. Okay. Uh, uh, most uh, uh, significant uh, difference is, I think, uh, Zephyr is a single uh, image uh, systems. So uh, it is easy to maintain and uh, uh, update and, and uh, 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 fix security for. 
and, and any other things is uh, simple. So, uh, uh, Android is very uh, difficult and complex uh, systems. Uh, so, uh, uh, I I'm working for a uh, development Android system. Uh, it is very painful and uh, most cost, cost of, uh, more cost, cost of to uh, maintain. Uh, every uh, uh, automotive company also uh, 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 facing the problems and obstacles. <laughs> so, uh, uh, now, uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, automotive industry also uh, uh, interesting to using Zephyr. Uh, so, uh, uh, here is uh, AGL member is here. Uh, uh, I want to do uh, opinions. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'm working at um, automotive industry and uh, currently I'm working as um, a Linux kernel engineer, but. Uh, before that, I was using uh, Artos. Uh, the name is Itron. Uh, it's really famous uh, Artos in Japan. And in my personal opinion, uh, if there's still um, uh, Artos engineer in Japan, then they will not be um, familiar with uh, open source nature. And so, not 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 on that problem will be not only uh, Zephyr is uh, not famous for those people, but uh, the the there is a big huge barrier to join into the uh, open source project. So yeah, yeah. And <laughs> is that is that a reason why we don't have many uh, Zephyr engineers in Japan? I. Maybe I think yeah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, uh, I, I'm not sure, but yeah, uh, and uh, also I, I I have a question, and um, uh, I I don't know why uh, yeah, um, Defa is so uh, famous in uh, e, uh, Europe or yeah any other regions than Japan, but yeah, I, I, I'm not sure why um, yeah in Japan it's yeah, like this. <laughs> but it may, may, maybe it's, yeah, because yeah, uh, Autos engineer in Japan does not know uh, well know about open source. So yeah, uh, and if if there's uh, some uh, uh, Japan local um, community and uh, uh, they can uh, start discussion in Japanese, yeah, that that will help. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, uh, this summer, uh, I invited I invited to uh, uh, presentation to uh, for uh, uh, such as uh, Japanese uh, embedded industry com communities. So uh, they are they are also uh, interested in Zephyr, but uh, uh, do, they don't uh, how, how to uh, communicate with open source communities. Uh, uh, I think uh, it is a very big chance uh, to uh, uh, inviting uh, uh, Japanese uh, traditional uh, uh, industry engineer from to uh, open source communities. I I. I, I I, I think to uh, 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 involve the, the Yeah, the space industry is also so closed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's changing. I mean, the NASA is already using uh, Linux to fly the uh, helicopters on the Mars, right? So it's changing, and it's already changed. Um, but the 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 I don't think right, <laughs> and. I don't know, if, but I don't know why. But uh, I think what we can do is to just, you know, use the Zephyr in the car industry. I mean, you guys. I mean, I'm not the car industry person, so yeah, uh, you can, you can, or the Toyota, Hondas, any, any, anyone working on the car industry. See, now it's time. Just you know, take the Zephyr. <laughs> it's free <laughs> and it's open. <laughs> Philip, uh, any uh, <laughs> any comment? <laughs> can give, give, give comment, comment. So for for the car industry, it's 
not an easy going thing. So you have a few OEMs, but you have many tiers. And as a tier, it's very hard to replace something and propose Zephyr because there's a high ecosystem dependency on existing solutions and the dominant solution is Autosar, which like has one major distributor having more than 50% penetration, I would say, in the market. I don't name it because it's a competitor of us. Um, nevertheless, it's so tightly coupled that you cannot even take an Autos application and bring it to any other OS. So it's really a lock-in ecosystem from 15 years ago, which still has good, nice things on the stack or so, but you see really it's coming. So there's, I mean, I just came from a two hours workshop to discuss how we can make use of Zephyr and automotive. We're discussing with AGL, uh, bring it forward in Elisa. We have, I know at least you know, four OEMs which are considering Zephyr. So that's really something where it could be up. But the safety certification is always the blocking thing. So it comes very fast to safety certification because most of the art of systems also require safety. Thank you. Thanks. I often heard that um, all the uh, middleware is not ready in the industry. So what if we port AutoZero or whatever, the any middlewares that car companies using onto the Zephyr? That's going to be nice. I think uh, 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 Ishisa mentioned uh, as uh, I, I, I don't know. Uh, I think uh, similar problem uh, with uh, what was that? Uh, it is a str uh, uh, strong uh, have a strong ecosystem for uh, existence. Uh, it is not not easy to replacement. Uh, uh, the Arduos is uh, their own uh, uh, ecosystems because uh, the, that is uh, developed for a special purpose. Uh, so. Uh, Zephyr is uh, uh, usually versatile purpose, uh, so uh, not much. Uh, 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 sometimes not much for uh, uh, existing systems. I think. Okay. Any other topic? Thank you for your, pr your presentation. And I, I think one reason why Zephyr is not famous in Japan is um, come from uh, lack of device support. Um, lack of device support? Lack of device support. I really? I, I think. I think um, <laughs> we have tons. I, I'm not using Zephyr right now, but um, two years ago, I tried to run Zephyr on my M5 stack. Oh. Uh, at that time, only thing I, can, I could do was printing Hello World to serial device. I, no, could I, fly, I fly the Moonlanders two years uh, ago. Um, uh, um, at that time, Zephyr didn't support um, M5 stack display device or audio device, so I could not uh, use M5 stack. So my, my question is that um, now Zephyr supports uh, M5 stack full, full features or not? I don't know. Is, does it support a full stack? <laughs> uh, currently, no. <laughs> uh, uh, I uh, investigate. Investigating to uh, uh, M5 stack core uh, 3 SE, uh, it is not work. Uh, uh, PMIC uh, is not works, and uh, GPIO extender is not works. So, uh, 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 sound device is depend on the uh, GPIO expander. The, also, it no, not works. <laughs> so uh, main main device driver uh, like to uh, need to create to support the uh, device. So be, uh, uh, it will be take a time. <laughs> okay, thank you. I I think um, Pico support is good for good news for Zephyr. Yes, uh, of course. <laughs> 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 thank you. Thank you.
but if it doesn't support the the stack you want uh, you want to use, it's very good opportunity to you know contribute to the Zephyr and become the Zephyr developers. One of. Okay, <laughs> we can help. All right, we only have uh, like five minutes, so any one more question, maybe? Uh, or topics, or whatever? Uh, hey, hey, uh, this, uh, I, I will speak uh, uh, this topic. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, only uh, can you uh, uh, speak a lot of uh, comments. Uh, uh, if anyone uh, thinking uh, this topic, uh, firstly, uh, thank you. <laughs> um, so, the back of my shirt. We have 100,000 commits up in the repo. I do not know any other embedded project out there that has that many upstream commits. Feel free to correct me, please, AGL folk, if you know of something in Yocto or something like that. But um, So I think our challenge right now is to keep scaling, okay, and to make it accessible. Um, getting into more and more market segments, um, like I say, we're busy building out our ecosystem and pri putting more options available. Um, but yeah, there's gaps still. There's certain things like, I'd, there's a lot of things I'd like to see added, <laughs> but it's gonna take developers wanting to put them in to make it happen. Um, Zephyr's pretty much being used a lot by the um, startup culture. And I think that's um, kind of what you're starting to see where there isn't the safety right now. So things like trackables, innovative solutions that really have to be, power, you know, concerned about power, Zephyr is a good fit today. Um, and I think it's going to be, the big challenge for us is going to be going after safety, as has been pointed out. Um, we are seeing it being used, though, in the things that aren't popular, like, you know, the, the pumping out the wastewater tank on the trains. Um, Checking the switches of the railways. We just learned about one actually last week where they've got Zephyr on the switches to do predictive maintenance, to check things that, you know, have to sit there and have battery life. You know, it's being used in the high power electric grids and it's sitting on those grids, checking the resistance of the wires for five years and sending signals in case it's been hit by lightning too much and it wasn't going to, you know, you don't want basically the wire burning through and you know, setting fires to things. So they've got this type of application. And like I said, when you have to basically go up in a cherry picker to change a battery, you really want the battery to last a long time. And so these are places where Zephyr is being useful. So things that, the challenges for us right now are going to be along the lines of continuing to keep our quality high. Um, quite frankly, improving the traceability so we can go after safety properly. I think that's the biggest challenge. And anyone who's interested in this area, um, like I say, we meet every week roughly in the safety working group. Um, and if you want to start helping us with the traceability, if you've got a background in safety, you want to help us with traceability. We've got a mechanism figured out and we just need people to help write requirements and help basically link this stuff. So those are the things that you know, are top of mind. And there's a lot of safety, the security certifications we'd like to get after too. I think we should be able to get them, it's just a matter of someone doing the work. So those are what I'm thinking about. Okay, and so, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. So, so I I also think uh, security and secure uh, is a big uh, challenge uh, on Zephyr. Uh, and uh, the uh, Zephyr's uh, common uh, challenge and obstacle uh, uh, and uh, our personal challenge and obstacle uh, is uh, uh, we can solve with the Zephyr. Uh, such as uh, firstly I commented to person uh, educational programs. Uh, uh, it is very uh, 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 impressive uh, use case, uh, I, I think. <laughs> oh, red card is rise. Today's bill is over. Thank you for attending these sessions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs>